Are you ready for boat season? Yesterday here, we were almost ready for boat season. It was like in the low to mid 90s. Today, I think it's like 41 for the high. Uh, so yesterday felt like boat season. Today, not so much. I don't know, maybe we'll be ice fishing tomorrow, but boat season will be coming soon. So today's video was actually inspired by one of our viewers that had some questions concerning boat treader braking, um, some things to look for. So I thought, man, that'd be a good idea for a video. So that's what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna cover the components of the brake system, what to look for, some of the most common failures, some of the most common and really overlooked, uh, just general everyday procedures and maintenance that you need to do on it and see if we can get you ready to go to the lake. So you may notice that we're gonna be working on the brakes for a boat treader and that we have no boat treader. You know why we don't have a boat treader? Because it's still a little wintry here where we're at and I'm gonna promise you, nobody works on their boat treaders for the most part during the winter. Um, and that's why I don't have a boat treader here. If it were, let's say, Memorial Day weekend, I would have seven boat treaders in the parking lot, two en route on the local wrecker service that could get them here. We'd get those done just in time for 4th of July and we'd be back in the boat treader repair business again. Don't be that person. Check your boat treader out during the off season, during the winter time. Uh, what I'm gonna show you today is not gonna be like hardcore repair. It's just gonna be everything that you need to look for before you get ready to head to the lake. So we're gonna kind of start at the beginning where the front of the treader would be. We'll work our way to the back. We're gonna name, show the components that all go together. Then we'll come back and spend a little extra time um, explaining what the component does, kind of what to look for on that component in case you're having an issue or to possibly prevent uh, further issues. So up at the front, this red portion here is called the actuator. This is the coupler. Some people will call it the hitch. Uh, this is what attaches, obviously, to the ball of your tow vehicle. Um, not everyone is going to look the same. This is a Demco style. This has an adjustable channel style coupler on it. Some are going to have an integrated coupler in it. They're all a little bit different, but they all do the same thing. Whenever you stop, your tow vehicle is going to push this coupler in and make it work. And it comes back here to this component, which I would say is the heart of the system. So this is the master cylinder cap, and we're gonna cover the importance of that in a little bit. Where that black hole is, you have something that looks similar to this. This is the master cylinder. This will be the heart. Once compressed, it pressurizes the fluid and gives you brakes. Behind that, you would have brake line. Some of the newer traders have pretty much went to a rubber flex line, um, still has metal fittings on it. Some are brass, some are zinc coated. Um, some have a combination of both. They'll have some steel line and then they'll have this at the caliper location. Both of them work. Both of them work fine. This will rust and corrode. This, the rubber will break down over time and the zinc or the brass fittings will corrode over time as well. So they both have their pros and cons, but either one is fine. Then you come back to the back at the axle location. You're going to have your rotor or you're going to have possibly a drum. We'll cover that in a second. So you're gonna have two different styles. You're gonna have an integrated, so a one piece, or you may have a hub that just has a rotor that slips over, kind of like some of your um, smaller cars and, and pickups, your automobiles. So this will be called the rotor. The disc is another word that it's called, um, and the hub. This is where your bearings goes onto your spindle, on your axle. So we'll talk about that. What goes over the disc is the caliper. This will be the back side of the caliper. I have it turned upside down just so you can see it. These are the pistons. You may have a caliper with one piston or you may have a caliper with two pistons. Whenever you apply brakes, these pistons will pull out and will move on to the brake pad. We'll press up against the disc to cause you to slow down. If you don't have the disc set up, you're going to have a drum set up. So this is a hydraulic brake shoe assembly or brake shoe backing plate. This is the wheel cylinder. This is a replaceable part. Most of the time, you don't replace this. You replace the whole thing. It's about the same money. Uh, to do that. And if this is needed, your other components as well. And this is the drum. I will tell you, this is a 10 inch drum, 12 inch brake. This will not fit on there, no matter how big of a hammer you own. It ain't going, but this is what I have. So this is what we're showing. Again, same concept. So let's move back up to the front end of the trailer. Uh, my camera lady is looking at me saying, slow down, dummy, because I ain't that fast. Sometimes I talk too fast. If you're on there and you say that I talk too fast, I apologize. I'm going to try to slow it down. I'm gonna try to get my deep voice, just be chill, and we'll make this video last 49 minutes. So let's move back up to the front, to the coupler. 
to get this trailer stopped. So we're back up here at the actuator. Again, you're going to need to know what brand actuator. If you need parts, a lot of the parts will not interchange. You're going to have Demco, uh, UFP, or Dexter now, uh, Titan, Atwood. There's, there's some that don't even, they're not even manufactured anymore, but you can still get replacement parts. Uh, most of these will have a model number on them that will tell what the brand is, then the model number, because that, that is going to be specific for the master cylinder and some of the internals. So within this coupler, there are some internal components. There's rollers. Uh, there's a sh shocks in some of those. Those wear out. We're not going to go that in depth on the actuator today because that would be a video in itself. What we're really doing, this is just day-to-day -day operation, things to look for on an annual basis or maybe semi-annual. Um, so let's cover that. So on this actuator, when you hit your brakes, as we said earlier, it pushes this shaft inside of this, which has a rod that goes to the master cylinder. So right here, you have a master cylinder inside and you have a push rod that pushes in to the master cylinder, which pressurizes the system by forcing fluid at a higher pressure back to the brake component, whether it's a disc or a drum. So this is kind of the heart of it. This is very important. This part right here is, is not necessarily any more important than the rest of it, but this is the thing you need to look at first. This is overlooked a lot of the time. I will tell you, many of the boat traders we come in here, even as they're five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, the cap has never been off. These caps are made to be removed. You may have a screw-on cap like this Demco. You may have an Atwood style cap. You may just have a rubber plug. Some of the nicer custom boat treaders, you'll have a screw on cap this way or this way that actually has a flush mount cap just for looks to make it look a little nicer on there. No matter what you have, you have to expose the inside of the reservoir. What else you're gonna need for that is a flashlight of your choice. I wouldn't recommend using a cigarette lighter or nothing. I'll just use a flashlight. Can we see down there how clean that is? That is a new coupler or a new coupler, I'm sorry. That is a new master cylinder and it's clean. If it were full of fluid, it still needs to look that clean. If your master cylinder is full of fluid or if it's empty and it's got a bunch of crap in there, it's gonna have to be removed and be cleaned. One thing I want you to note, you notice this does not have a lid. Some of these will bolt straight to the top of the inside or the underside of the actuator and they'll have a rubber or felt gasket on there. Those will wear out over time, allowing water and contaminants to come in. So that's another thing you gotta look at. If you have a bunch of gunk in there, more than likely it's gonna be the cap has failed, you've lost the seal on it, or the seal on the underside of the actuator has failed and you've got stuff in it, you're gonna need to remove it. If it's got a bunch of rust, like this is a plastic master cylinder where this is a cast. These, if you get a ton of rust in there, a lot of times you cannot get them cleaned out it's not worth your time, take it out and replace it. If you're not capable of replacing, you're gonna to need to take that somewhere. If you look right here on the back of this, you would have a line that would screw in here. Yours may look like this, or you may go look at yours after this video and you may have this round plastic cylinder with a couple wires coming out. If you have that, don't freak out. That is there to help you when you go to put your treader in reverse. If you have a solenoid right here, it's a relief valve, basically it, keeps your brakes from locking up when you're backing up at home or if you're backing down the boat ramp. Some other actuators and coupler setups, they'll have a static lockout. So at the front of it, they'll have a pin or clip you have to put in place because you have to stop the action, you have to stop the action of the actuator. If you're pressing in and it's pushing brake fluid, you're never gonna get down the boat ramp. You're gonna be going I'll do that one more time. Sound like a turkey. You're gonna do that, people are gonna laugh at you, you're gonna go home, you're gonna be upset, your feelings are gonna be hurt, so don't, don't do that. Just make sure all that's working uh, correctly. That being said, if you do have the electronic solenoid, you need to make sure that that's working. When you go to back up, if you have any type of resistance, you may need to check your plug. If you have a blowed fuse on the reverse side or some of those, you have to turn your running lights on in order to make that work, just depending on the boat trader manufacturer. If you've pulled a treader any, you're gonna know about those things. I'm not gonna go into depth, but this is for maybe maybe you haven't, maybe you got a new boat treader this year. That's just some things to look for. So in the line, you know, which is better, rubber line or metal line? They both have their pros and cons. Uh, this is harder to install. That's why a lot of the manufacturers went to this. There's no flaring, there's no bending. Um, the other thing, this will corrode because it's steel. These will corrode because they're steel too. If they're brass, they'll corrode. 
the rubber will break down over time. Regardless, steel or rubber, they both have to be maintained. They both need to be flushed out from time to time. I'm gonna say in your boat trader, you may want to do a full flush out, you know, every couple of years, three years, depending on how much you use it. Or if you look in it, you know, it may be a year old and you may have some junk in there, you may need to go ahead and do a flush. If your fluid has turned black, um, that these have probably broke down or the rubber inside the caliper, which we're fixing to cover, has broke down. At that point, you're gonna have to flush all that, but you're gonna have to replace the um, faulty components so that it don't stop back up. So let's move on back here to the axle. So if we had a trailer right now, instead of a six foot table, we would be at the axle. Um, but since we have a six foot trailer, we got there quick. The actuator's there, axle's here. So on that axle, you're gonna have one of two setups. So you're gonna have this setup, which would be the hub and rotor. They may be one piece, they may be a two piece. A couple things to look for on here is rust. If you have a galvanized trader, you may have a salt water uh, rig. It's likely gonna be stainless or gonna have some type of protectant coating on there to keep it from rusting. Um, and you may even have that just on your regular fresh water as well. But these will still rust, even I see some of the stainless, some of the lower grade stainless will rust over time. And it depends how much salt water exposure you've had. If you look right in here, this is important. You have all these little holes, these fins. These are the cooling fins. These need to be free and clear of any dirt, debris, uh, dirt daubers. Um, if you know what a dirt dauber is, leave a comment below. Um, we'll be able to tell what part of the country you're from by that. So if you do have some of that, just wash this out, you know, take a screwdriver or something, get that clean, because this is what keeps it cool while you're braking so that you don't overheat the rotor, you don't overheat the caliper and cause seal failure, or worst case scenario, if you did this, you would have to be like really hammering on the brakes, uh, cause brake fade, which is basically a boiling or evaporation of the brake fluid. Uh, usually you don't see that unless you're driving a race car. So if you're driving your boat trying like a race car, I guess anything's possible. I've never seen it. The other thing to look for, you see how pretty this is? If it gets grooved and ground up or super rusty, just replace that dude. I'm gonna see if we can get this angle on there. So right here where the side meets the top, can you see that little bevel? It's like a nice bevel on like a tempered glass. This little bevel right here, that's the chamfer. If the surface of this gets where this is gone, so it'd be a 90 degree right there, this rotor is pretty much worn out. You could take it in and have it mic'd to see if there's any life left on it. But more than likely, if it gets down there and you're looking at having it turned or resurfaced, if you can find a shop to do that these days, it's not gonna have enough meat left by the time they get all the warping out of it. So you're just gonna have to replace it at that time. So look at the thickness. Most traders, you can check that out without even removing the tire. A lot of times you can just crawl underneath it and you can see it. What causes that is the pads wearing out. So you see it's a new pad, it's got some thickness to it. If this dude is getting paper thin, um, it's time to replace it. Um, like some of your automobiles, they'll have a squealer on there. Most of the boat traders and stuff don't have a squealer. Um, if it goes to squealing, it's too late. Um, you are metal to metal and it will stop. I guarantee you, it will stop on a dime, um, but it's likely gonna catch on fire and you may need a new boat out of the deal. Uh, it may make you help your boat payments if you burn the thing down. I don't know, but I don't recommend it. I'd recommend just stopping it. This, most of the time, you can check the thickness of the pad through the backside. Most of the wheels they put on boat treaders, either aluminum, they're, they're modular, they have some type of see-through on it so you can see the thickness of the pad. So again, you don't necessarily have to take the wheel off to do a visual on this. These you definitely need to check annually as far as the thickness on it. I wouldn't say you need to check this every time you pull unless you're going to the boat or going to the lake five days a week. If you're going to the lake five days a week, you got it going on. Um, send me like what you do for a living. I may be interested. I may hang this up and we'll just, I'll just go to, to the lake five days a week. That sounds like a pretty good deal. So if you don't have the disc set up, you're going to have the hydraulic uh, drum set up in the hydraulic brake shoe set up, which you have here. So in that, most of this is gonna look like a traditional electric brake setup, except for this right here. You have no magnet, you have no actuating arm, you have a wheel cylinder. Uh, this is similar to the wheel cylinder you would have in your 1955 model pickup. It's old technology, but it still works. You still have this set up on some of your new vehicles. Some have dual piston, some have single piston like this. When you apply pressure to the brake system on here, it pushes this little rod out, causing these to expand in your brake drum and helping you to slow down and to stop your rig. I will tell you, this is a 10 inch drum. This is a 12 inch brake assembly. These won't fit together, even if you get your big hammer out. Uh, this is what I had laying around, so this is what I used. Just like 
these pads aren't for this rotor or for this caliper, this caliper isn't for this rotor. None of this stuff really goes together. We just use it to make a video because we don't have a trader and we're limited again on parts because parts are hard to get. A lot of these parts you can get online. Some of them you can probably get on Amazon. I'll go through and I'll leave as many links as I can on Amazon. But again, remember just because if I put an Atwood style cap, you may have a Demco, you may have a UFP, you may have Dexter, you may have Titan, I don't know what you have. You're gonna to need to know what you have to make this work. Something else is important when it comes to the master cylinder. So let's say worst case scenario, this dude is, uh, it's just a paperweight at this time. It's not gonna work anymore, it's nasty, it's beyond its life, you have to replace it. This is very specific to the coupler. Even brands of couplers run different setups on there. So you're gonna to have to make sure you get the right one. Sometimes you'll need to remove it to see if there's a part number on it unless you can get the part number off the coupler, and many times you can. The other thing that's important about this, many times there is a different master cylinder setup for disc brake and drum brake, and they will not interchange. If you put a disc brake master cylinder on, on your drums, it's gonna blow the cylinder out. If you put a drum brake master cylinder on your disc brakes, it's not gonna provide enough pressure to make it work properly. So remember that. One thing else I wanna cover, and I've covered this, some of this in another video. Um, our viewer had mentioned this about brakes seizing up. So on this caliper, there's multiple places you need to look for as far as corrosion. You need to look here. These are two pistons. Like I said, you may have one piston. These move in and out once brake is applied to the, uh, to the unit. If these seals get bad and deteriorate, whether weather, wear and tear, whatever, and you get water in here, it can cause these pistons to rust and not to come out, or they may come out crooked. If you have this brake pad in here, and if it comes out crooked, it's gonna wear funny, it's not gonna stop correctly, but if they do that, it can get stuck. And what happens on that, it will get stuck, and many times it's when you've pulled it home, you've got to the boat ramp, you've parked your trailer, you're on the boat and you come back, it's stuck and the brake is locked up. So if you're going down the road, like if, say you just got your boat out of the water, you get on the trailer, you get on the road, and you feel some resistance, like man, this thing is pulling heavier than normal. Either you didn't get all the water out of your boat, or you may have a brake seized up. So just pull over and check both of those, because if this is seized up, this dude's gonna get hot. And it's not gonna cause brake fade, it's gonna cause uh, lubrication loss, the wheel's gonna fall off, and it's gonna be record time for you. So check that out. You may have bolts, which would be caliper guide pins is what the technical term is for them, um, that move in and out, that this slides on when you're applying brake pressure. Um, sometimes if those get real gunky, when, it, when, this, when this pushes the pad out, it will not release and this will get hung. So sometimes you have to replace those or a lot of times you can just take them out, clean them and apply some caliper grease. Um, that's something you can pick up at a part store. I'll try to leave a link for some caliper grease. The things you need to know is the name of the parts. That'd be helpful if you're having to call a place to get parts. That'd be helpful if you're having to look online. If you were to call me and say, hey, I need uh, brake shoes for my so-and-so brand axle and you show up with this, I'm gonna try to pull you the wrong part. This is a brake pad. This is a brake shoe. So just know the difference on that. This is a drum. This is a rotor. And those get mixed up all the time. There's people that call, you know, and it, it's not, not knocking anybody. I've called stuff, I've probably called the stuff the wrong thing in this video. I know I have because my wife has already looked at me like, dummy, that's not what it's supposed to be called. I'll tell you how smart I am. This is the second time we shot this video. I did the whole thing a while ago, didn't have my mic turned on, duh. Drum, brake shoe, rotor, caliper, brake pad. You're gonna know what brake lines are master cylinder cap, master cylinder, flashlight to look in the master cylinder of your choice, actuator, this is what makes the brakes work, and your coupler, coupler may be integrated or not, but that's a question they may ask you. You may say, hey, I have a, a Demco style um, actuator, they're gonna ask you, does it have an integrated coupler or does it have like a channel receiver coupler? That's gonna be important because there does come a time where this thing will get corroded or if you go, if you're the five day a week guy getting to go to the lake, uh, bless you, that's awesome. But these will wear out and they have to be replaced. If they have to be replaced, a lot of them are bolted on, but they do weld some of these on too. So just depending on how it is attached to your treader, it may be a chore. I said all this to say this, if you don't think you're capable of working on this, don't don't feel bad about it. Don't be intimidated by none of this. This is a little different. Um, there's a lot to this. So just take some time. 
do a walk around. It don't take five, 10 minutes to go through this, but check the brake fluid in there. Make sure you got fluid because there's no fluid, there's no brakes. If you just feel something or if it don't look right, you know, just don't, don't chance it. Don't put yourself in that predicament. Guys, if you load the wife up and the kids and you didn't do any of this and you break down on the way to the lake, it's not going to be a fun Memorial Day, Labor Day, or Fourth of July weekend, weekday, whenever it falls on. It's not going to be good. So just check your stuff out. Have a good time. Do this during the winter, during the downtime, and you'll be ready to roll.